Hello eighth grade and welcome to your field study. For those of you who weren't here during elementary, my name is Miss Franz and I am the art teacher at Amana Academy. Uh, I'm going to be giving you a brief tour of the Heim Museum in Atlanta. Then you will get a chance to explore their website and look at their collections and you will have a writing prompt for your STEM journal. The High Museum, part of the Woodruff Arts Center. The High Museum is located at 1280 Peachtree Street in Atlanta. It is now a very large complex. It did not start off that large. If you have been into the interior before, you might recognize it as they've used it in movies like Black Panther, which they used it as the substitute for the uh, British Museum of Art. A little bit of the history of the High. The High family, as in that's their last name, donated their house and the land that the museum is on in 1926. So we're getting close to 100 years of the High. In 1955, they actually made a separate building for the art exhibits. Originally, they were being displayed in the High's uh, house. The idea of an art scene in Atlanta was starting to form. Now, you might not be aware of this, but with Atlanta being such a big city, I mean literally a big city, it's been very strange that we don't have a bigger art scene. We don't have bigger theaters, we don't have more artists, we don't have more dance. We do have the music now, but we but it was still kind of slow in the beginning and there's a reason for it there was a disaster in 1962 that hurt the atlanta art scene badly there are people called patrons patrons are the people who support the arts they give money to the artists they give money to theaters they give money to schools to help with the arts and when atlanta was trying to create and start their art scene in the 60s a hundred, well over a hundred, of the arts patrons went to Europe to purchase art for museums, to look into art uh, exhibits and schools and other new methods that they could bring the arts to Atlanta. And sadly their plane upon returning crashed and 106 Atlanta art patrons were killed. So Atlanta went from having an up-and-coming art scene to having almost nobody wanting to fund the arts. However, there were a few people who didn't make the trip and therefore they were still in Atlanta and they honored the patrons who died by creating the Atlanta Memorial Arts Center. And the artwork that they had bought, which was not in the plane with them but was coming across on a ship, was displayed. The modern building that we know, the big white facade and the big lobby, was built in 1983. The building was funded by the president of Coca-Cola. Three more buildings were built in 2005 to help with the enormous number of exhibits that we were starting to accumulate. There are seven main collections at the high. There's also usually one that travels. If you've heard about the one from the Louvre, that would be a, one of the traveling ones. There's the African art collection, the American art, the decorative and design arts, European art, folk and self-taught art, modern and contemporary art, and the photography. So I'm gonna show you some examples from each one of these, and you're going to want to Think about which one you would focus on for your STEM journal entry. The African collection houses artwork and relics from across Africa and as far back as the 13th century. Pictured here is a piece simply called Mask by a Yaka artist from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The American collection contains uh, artwork from American artists from 1780 to 1980. A lot of these are paintings, mostly they're um, uh, landscapes like you see here, The Old Homestead by James McDougall Hart. 
Then they have the decorative and design collection. I, I've been to the high a lot, and this is one of the this is one of my areas that I like to go through because it's so interesting. They focus on objects that combine art with function. It's making things that look really nice but are still usable. And it contains artwork from as back as far back as 1640 all the way up to the present. The coffee pot and the coffee service that is listed uh, seen here is from the 1920s I believe. Then there is the European collection. This is also one of my personal favorites because I am a huge impressionist and post-impressionist fangirl. This is a Claude Monet, the autumn on the sin. So there's a lot with paintings and there's a lot of portraits too. There is the folk and self art self taught excuse me collection so what it means by folk and self taught these are people who did not go to a school for art most of the people that you see uh, and especially in the modern and contemporary which is up next these are people who did uh, they would be people who studied folk and self taught collection are people who admittedly had no training in art but decided to start making something. Um, the High was one of the first places to start collecting folk and self-taught art back in the 19 uh, back in 1975. Howard Finster they have a huge exhibition from him and uh, he's pretty predominant down here in the south well he's from Georgia so it, it was uh, They've got a lot of his artwork too. Modern and contemporary collection. Uh, modern and contemporary artists mean people who are still alive and have gone to a school or have a degree or have some formal training in their artwork. And then the photography collection. I actually think this one was really interesting. I mean, I like photography too. Um, but back in the 70s a lot of museums did not necessarily consider photography to be an art form and i read about this a lot of people in the beginning of photography thought that it was just a way to capture real life but that didn't make it art now things have greatly changed of course and people do consider photography to be an art but that means that they've got some very old photography back before people were truly considering it an art and when the photographers were trying to make it art. So for your STEM journal, you are going to be choosing one of the High Museum's collections, just one of them. Choose three works of art in that collection. Write down the name and the title of each work and the artist. Write a paragraph on why you think the High Museum chose to include each piece in their collection. So let me walk you through what is the High Museum's website like. Oops, sorry. Let's go back to that. So all you have to do is look for high.org, H-I-G-H dot O-R-G. And you will see that there is a large interactive website that you will be able to go through. It has a lot of information, really. What you want to do when you are looking through it is you want to find Explore Online. And then you want to look for Collections Area. So let's say that you want to go for the decorative arts and designs. So if you collect, if you click on that, so I'll turn it off and it gets something from everything. But if you click on one, it will pull up only these. And there's a hundred pages of artwork that you could look through. And yes, these are things that are on display. You could go and find them. And remember, you're looking for three pieces. So I'll click this first one. There's the information on what the name is. Sometimes they're not named something like spectacular. Like this one's just called rectangular plaque. That's fine. And here's the artist. 
Now, that's the closest we have to the artist, which means we know who made it, what company made it, but we don't actually know the artist themselves. Uh, and then that's, well, there's just more information down there on about it. So if you need to back up, then I can come back and I can find even more. Let's see if I can find one that has somebody's name on it. Here we go. So this one, New Yorker, the New Yorker Jazz Bowl, the artist, Victor Streckengost, and then that was the actual uh, company that made it. So that's how you find the information. So again, if you were a little lost or if you get stuck, you can come over to the side menu, hit Art, and you can go to Explore Collections, and that will take you back to the beginning. So... A reminder, your, uh, your STEM journal entry, choose one of the High Museum's collections, choose three, choose three works of art in that collection, write down the name and the title of each work and the artist, write a paragraph on why you feel like the High Museum chose to include those pieces in their collection. Last thing I would like to leave you with is that um, the High is currently open. They are doing, they are keeping very safe practices. I've actually been to it since um, the pandemic started. Uh, they, are, they are making sure that everyone wears a mask. They are making sure that people stay distance, uh, stay a good distance away from each other, which is kind of easy because the place is huge. So if you do get really interested in the high, I can strongly suggest taking a trip down if you can. You can get student um, discounts. You could talk to them about uh, the audio tours where they take you through things. And it's just really fun to be able to walk through the High Museum and see the art that we have. A lot of it ties in a lot to the South and um, artists from Georgia in particular. So there you go. Thanks.